We also have this vision of what school is. And so we just think that students show up at school, they put their stuff in their locker, and then from you know nine to three, they're learning the whole time. And in fact, they're learning, the time that's focused on learning instruction is very little. It's transition, it's the learning through peers, that um, constant feedback, the communication that's happening. Uh, it's not just this one direction thing from teacher to student. And, it's the relationship, it's the care, it's the routine, it's knowing that you're gonna get a hot meal. All of these things that make the school a sacred place for students. And, and so yeah, both of these populations have not had something that is so core to what they need to be the humans that they are. And so you could see how particular, particularly as we're almost a year in, this is really difficult for people and they're kind of ready, you know, they're just going through the motions. Um, some students have that external motivation. They want to keep getting the good grades. Maybe they have a parent that's cheering them on. Come on, you can do this. You got to do this. And others just don't have that foundation in order to see why they should be jumping through these hoops that aren't giving them back that energy that going to school had. And so that's why I believe that emergency remote teaching and learning has not been the same for students. Um, and it really has so little to do with actually teaching and learning. It's a conversation I just had last week, in fact, with the school about ways to um, help students get more engaged in online school. And one of the things that's missing of course right now is those social interactions that happen in lunchrooms, in the hallways, on group projects, because they don't easily translate into online spaces, especially if you're not skilled in online teaching and learning. And that is also due to the, the, the structure of the school day for a lot of students in the pandemic teaching and learning. There's not that in-between time. So um, some teachers are getting really creative. Um, they are house hosting lunchtime with their students. So there's no lesson, there's no activity, but it might be a 30 minute, and this again would be for elementary and or middle school students, to simply be online together eating lunch. For a lot of elementary students, a lot of teachers are having like open Lego time where students bring their Legos and they're sort of just having this space to talk to each other that's not structured. I think we've always been aware and worked really deliberately and intentionally to figure out um, what barriers exist and how we can provide support to families. But the pandemic um, shed a light on those um, inequities. And so like other school districts in the state of Minnesota, we worked more directly one-on-one -on -one with students and one-on-one -on -one with families to really understand what the challenges were. And oftentimes they, were, they might be non-school related. It could be housing, it could be uh, food, it could be transportation, it could be internet access. Um, so the pandemic really, because instruction, we weren't at school, we couldn't take care of a student physically at school one-on-one -on -one for an entire period of time, we became more aware of those inequities and the challenges. Um, and so we, we really have forced ourselves to continue to identify partners and ways that we can work through solutions. One of the things that came out is I facilitate, at one point it was a weekly meeting, but facilitate a monthly or every other month meeting now with community leaders from all five of our different counties. Those include mayors and system administrators and leaders from nonprofits and people from our religious community and people that own local businesses in town. And it's a way to talk a little bit about what those inequities are and how we can support each other and our families to ensure that at the other end of this pandemic that everybody's thriving. So that has been really productive and a great thing that's come out of this pandemic. We have an amazing opportunity to lead during these times. And I'm so privileged and honored to serve as superintendent here in ISD 728 to be able to do that. I couldn't be more proud of our teams for coming together to do so many things for our students, families, and community. I think about um, providing free breakfasts and lunches. We were serving in distance learning more than 9,000 meals a day to families that were not coming to school. We were providing childcare free of charge 
for families throughout our community. We were providing online instruction to almost 14,000 students with devices and internet access. We were holding opportunities and collaborating on efforts with our nonprofits like our Care Food Shelf to make sure that we were giving out food for weeks at a time uh, during the weekends and late at night. We were working with our families who are homeless to, to provide places to shower and places to make sure that they had food. So again, uh, the opportunities that we have and take seriously um, is immense. And we're so grateful to be able to do so much more than the regular business, right? The regular day-to-day -day instruction. And the bottom line is when we have situations like a pandemic and we we worry about our livelihood, whether that be our households or paying the mortgage or having food or making sure we have transportation for our kids. When the school district can come in and relieve some of those pressures and alleviate that worry, then it creates for a stronger community. And that's what school districts do.